Ladies and gentlemen, we have this guy here. Um, the story would hear it. Um, it's a guy gonna be featuring in the history of soccer here in Toronto, in the Caribbean community. He has two sons that made it in Europe and um, based on your request out there and my uh, intuition, we'd like to find out from him how we pull this off and all the different challenges and the successes he had, how we pull this off. So, so I'll ask you to introduce yourself and um, tell us when you came here and how you get by into this traditional mm. football. Bobby de Guzman. Oh. Julian Bobby de Guzman. My real, my, my real name is Julian Bobby de Guzman. I, Julian is named after me. He's Junior. So, I, I was named after my grandfather. So... Anyways, I arrived in Canada from the Philippines. Okay. I came in the early 70s. And like all typical Filipinos, we play basketball. We don't play football. We play basketball. But uh, as I, I as growing up, uh, I was involved with a lot of West Indian people, uh, Jamaican specifically, uh, but mostly a lot of Caribbeans. And, and a guy invited me to come and play because he said, hey, you're good in basketball, you can catch catch ball. I said, all right, I can go catch ball. I said, all right. So I tried it. You know, they liked me up there, so I did I did good. So next thing you know, I was playing for what you grew up with. But um, as we love the game, we want to play it every day if we can. We're still young. But, you know, I didn't know, like, I'm, I'm a keeper, so I don't really know how to, well, I played out a couple of times, you know, so, but I know that the most dangerous guys <clears throat> are the guys who can control the ball. Yeah. So I, I had some okay skills, not great, okay skills. And so, so I started playing um, out for a couple of years until I injured myself and I said, ah, go back to the keeping thing because when you're playing forward and you want to score, but man is going to lick you down, you know, yeah. break off your legs if you have to. So that I got started with Julian. But well, before we get to Julian, uh, I understand you played at Fleminum Park and Malvern. Um... Started at Clifford Cobras with a, a lot of mostly Jamaican Chinese guys, uh, Bobby Chong and those guys. And we played in a lot of leagues, CCA League, Chinese Caribbean League. And we played in a couple of other leagues and tournaments we entered. And eventually I progressed to Mobile United, which is a lot more competitive because they played in the T and D. And then as I get older, you know, we can't play as much as strong anymore. We compete against Magic and West Indies. So you start going down to the recreational league. I played with the British League, with CBC and those guys. And I played with diplomats in the Flemington League. And I played with a bunch of Guyanese guys in the, in the old boys guys in the, in the Marvin League, you know. So that's how I, I started playing. So I understand. So now we know you end up being embedded a lot in the European because you had two sons make it there. But mm. um, let's round off the Caribbean League now. What was that in your foundation before you went to Europe? Yeah. Um, did it help? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The thing is, especially recreational ball, like, you know, with the, having leagues like that, whether it's the Flemington League where they, they would have on Sundays where they have barbecues, you can smell the jerk on the side and, you know, you have music going on. It's good for the community to bond together different from different islands and so forth. It's, it's always nice, you know, it's always nice. Those were nice back in the days, you know, I mean, here's more, nowadays it's kind of different, but back in the days, man, we had all the family coming in, not just the like football players, but family coming in to enjoy and, and, and you know, the, the company of the, the, the community, you know? Well, Bobby, you know, while that is true, very few people around your time did what you mm. did. You enjoy that recreational ball, and yeah, mm. when your wife tells you it's time to concentrate on the kids, yes, you just yes. have to put some heavy time into the kids. Did that? Yes, is that sacrificing your ball and decide to focus on them totally? Well, a little bit of both because you know you you you, you look then and you kind of realize, hang on a second here, these kids are pretty good. You know, you look back and say, these kids are pretty good. Maybe I should spend in some time and harness the skills, you know, because, you know, they play better than me because and I'm an I'm old man, right, you know? So I say you kind of look and then as they progress and they start playing compet first it's house league and then they started going to tournaments and, and competitive and I was like, 
oh man, we're getting good. We win tournaments and so forth. So you, you build up from there, you know, successes, you know, little steps become, next thing you know, you're, you're sprinting, you know? So, you know, going so for big, big, big things like, like what, we, what I mentioned to you when his, 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 his dreams and so forth. And because I thought, hey, I'm going to get me a scholarship when, he, you know, he finishes school. It saves me some money. But when I told him about the scholarship, his, his ideas were different. He's, he's got bigger goals. Like you know, when he wants to play in Europe. I said, really now? You know, so and that's why I had to say, well, you got to prove to me how badly you want to play in Europe. And we'll see what happens, you know. And I promise you, I'll take him. That's why I said, you know. So yeah. that's where it all started. Yeah, but Bobby, for him to convince you that way, where we know even up to now, a lot of the parents still hoping that these guys get scholarships and stuff in the States. And remind mm -hmm. you, we can't second guess him now because he did make it. Um, mm -hmm. What was that negotiation like? Um, you know? Well, as a father, you know, you don't think of it these days. You know, I said, oh, you know, kid had big dreams. And yeah, it's good. We will see, you know, but you know, he's good, but you don't know how good he is. You know, I mean, I know he had a passion for it and the desire for it, but you know, he's not actually the biggest player. He's not the fastest player. I mean, he's got some skills and he can read the game, but you know, so but the the, the passion, the passion and the desire overcomes everything. And you, you, when you have that kind of ambition, man, like like they always say, it's an old saying: if you want to bet, you want to, you can be anything you want to be. You just have to put it in, and what you put in, you're gonna get rewarded for it. You know, you get back what you put in. You know. Well, you're sounding like a man to your word because within that scholarship time, uh, you thought this might have been a false, uh, a promise he couldn't um, fulfill, but he ended up getting the marks now and you're stuck with the fact that you had yeah, to, He uh, called uh, me out on it. He yes. called me out on it yes. as that. Here's and, the mark and, you know, guy made the dean's list and so forth. So I said, oh my God, you know, so, and, and back then, you know, I've never been to Europe and I wasn't a rich man. And so you got to take some savings. And, you know, I was like, geez, got to tell the wife, said, you know what? We got to cut back on some of these things because I'm going to be here for a couple of weeks. We're going to be staying in the hotel. You don't know anything now. You don't know the language. You don't know nothing. You just go. Imagine that. Just go. Yeah. Wow. This, this is what we want to hear. Because um, so now you, you venture with him. And uh, obviously he went, uh, he didn't make the cut in final. Right. Yeah, yeah, uh, they, they, they how make, was that to you? Were you disappointed too, or or what we, happened? We, we, went with a friend. I understand those two of them guys went. Yeah, he, we went with with his friend Caesar, and Caesar made it, and uh, they they picked him. I mean, we went to a couple of clubs down there. I think we went to like four or five clubs. I contacted mainly like uh, a friend of mine contacted um, um, Feyenoord, and and he made all the arrangements and so forth. But we all, we also contacted a couple of clubs to try out and so forth. But uh, that was a big club. You know, and we actually went to Ajax too, but the Ajax, like, you know, they want credentials, right? You know, they want, are you in the national team? Are you in the provincial team? Well, you know what? We really can't take it because Julian couldn't make even the provincial back then with, you know. Yeah, we're going to get, to so we're gonna get together. We're going to wrap up with that um, because we want to make sure the public realize he did make it because I want to make sure that from his dad, this is a young person who his dad gave him the opportunity based on mm -hmm. his wanting to. And it's mm -hmm. a credit to you, Bobby, and we want to hear this out. Um, so when, obviously from the club thing, not playing with the um, scholarships, mm -hmm. he was in what, North Scarborough? Because I understand you were in North Scarborough from Byron. On we merged uh, Aging Court and uh, St. Andrew together and became North Scarborough. And we became one of the biggest clubs in the province because we had in every category in competition in 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 rep which they call competition the rep competition we had at least two to three teams in every division and we were flourishing back then you know flourishing okay uh, know, so with, i guess that did help julian foundation too or oh yeah he's the, he, these guys were involved with soccer from from uh, because you know being uh, the director of, of competitive um competition is in, that you uh, north scarborough yeah that was me I was a director for years and years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was I was grassroots soccer. We made all kinds of tournaments. We yeah, we we did all kinds of stuff. But uh, I, I I handled uh, permits for all the competitive competitive coaches all from all different levels. You know, try to get players and training grounds and so forth because I control also the the gyms and you know gyms are a big yeah. piece. Then in the winter, you know, 
yes. and also the fields. Yes. I remember when that started playing. But let me ask you, Bobby, that was before you start getting into the recreational ball with Fleming and Malvin or that run in parallel? That was before. That was before. I was younger then. I was younger then. As you know, I, I, as I got older, that's when I started playing recreational with the other guys, with, with Malvern and, and diplomats at, at Flemington and so forth. That, that was old. I was older. I was older then. But when I was younger, I was still kind of playing competitive and organizing stuff. So, you know, so I was, I was busy. You know, when we have, when we're young, we have a lot of energy. So, know? yeah. So what in the local club with the North Cabo, what, give, um, there must be a time where Julian, it can't be just looking at wanting to play Dutch for, uh, or, or over in Europe. He, there's something must have influenced him that um, you said you had the literature on the, the Dutch football? The Dutch thing. No, the, the Dutch was just, it's one of those things because they were, they were a fan of the Dutch team Ajax and, and they play good football, you know, the way they play and so forth. And, and, and that's why I did the research because, you know, back then, you know, we, we, we look at the English football and the Scottish football. It's like, it's like a volleyball going back and forth. It's like, we were not impressed with that thing. So we were more impressed with holding the ball on the ground and so forth. So, and that's what the Dutch total football was. And that's why I did a research on that. And that's what I taught the kids, you know, how to hold the ball, roll the ball, step over the ball, pull the ball back, you know, all the skills that you can think of with the ball, just like in basketball. In basketball, everything you can think of with the hands, shooting, you know, passing and doing all that. You got to learn how to do all this, you know, the right weight and so forth with the ball passing. This time it's with your feet. And how do you do that? It's all repetitiveness, repetitiveness, repetitiveness. Because in football, you get one chance if you're lucky. And when you get that one chance, all that time you've been practicing repetitively and on all those years, that's that your moment to do it. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's in Europe now, and um, when did you relax on Julian that, okay, he, you know, because um, it seemed he didn't make the cut in the beginning, and then he mm -hmm. went to Marseille. When did you relax mm -hmm. and start concentrating on Jonathan? When, when did you say, well, Julian's okay? Well, yeah, you know, again, when we went to Europe, you know, like I said, wow, Julian, yeah, again, it, it was not the fault of his own that he was so far behind, but in Canada, we didn't have that coaching and, and environment where they could c compete at that level because it was still at infant stages, soccer in Canada. And so he was so far behind technical wise. And that's why, boy, oh boy, now, now I know where he's at. Jonathan, although he's a talent, more, way more talented than Julian, he still needs to be in Europe as young as he can so that he can keep on progressing at that level. Because at a certain age in Canada, like when she's right, teenagers and so forth, there's so much distraction, whether it's basketball or hockey or baseball or even girls, you know. So there's so much distraction. And these kids, I'm, I was blessed with kids that are focused on solely soccer, you know, the, the girls and everything else. I told them, hey, you want girls? Be successful. You can get all the girls you want. There right? You go. There you go. And, and come on, don't let no girls hold you back or anything hold you back on your dream. And once they got their dream, now they're living it, you know? So now that uh, Julian make his breakthrough, um, I want the people to understand what it takes for a young player as Jonathan oh. age to make that move and what is catered for them when they make that move. Because now in school, they that's pretty early in school, even yeah. here, to leave well, here. So is there the club's cater or... How does that work? No, no, it's, it's it, uh, okay. Uh, a lot of these kids, I, I'll tell you, a lot of kids are way, way more talented than Julian was. I mean, that, but, but the biggest, that they, they went to Europe for tryouts and so forth. But the biggest difference is a lot of these kids are sheltered or they're not ready for this type of kind of impact, you know, where as Julian is like living the dream, hey, I'm going to do this. He, he, he's so, everything's against the odds. You know, you know, he, he's a minority. That, 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 that's, that in itself is a standout. That, that there's a culture you have to deal with. There's a language you have to deal with. You know, there's so much sacrifices that you have to do. Not, and that's just before you even touch a football. And you know, when you touch a football, when you're out there, especially you're a foreigner, they ain't going to pass you the ball. But you got to make your runs. You got to do this. You can't show your frustration because that shows your character. You just do what you're supposed to do because the coaches are watching. 
there's so much, so much obstacles that these kids have to go through. And that's how you determine the ones that's going to make it or the ones that's not. Not necessarily the ones that's talented. Because like I told you, Julian was not the biggest or the fastest or the strongest. He had some skills, but he had some intelligence and desire and ambition. And, 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 and that's what he wanted. And that's what he got. He made the sacrifice. He was make. He was ready to make those sacrifices, and so was Jonathan. And that's why they were successful. No, obviously, it sounds like Julian having maybe a two cards missing in the deck knew about the cards missing and compensated for those cards missing ability wise, but yes. dedicated. No, did Jonathan recognize that maybe he was a little more talented? And he was in a better situation than his brother. Did Julian because it sounds to me like Julian would even explain all that to Jonathan, or maybe you. Would. Oh, he, he's constantly. He was very close to his brother because telling him everything. So he and he knew more. I, as he went along, obviously he knew more than me because you know, father. I have my limitations. I admit that I wasn't a professional or anything like that. I just enjoyed the game when I played it, and I passed on what I can research. You know, and as for Julian, he was playing. As a big brother, he passed it on to his little brother. And, you know, so we were both, because even he would be calling me in Marseille and go, Dad, it's Jonathan, you know, is he practicing? Is he daily? Like, don't worry, though. I actually, uh, Jonathan was actually practicing with uh, Julian's uh, team, with, with Mr. H, Mr. Haddad, Pat Haddad. And, and, and he was doing quite well. And he's actually playing the games. And I was like, see, you don't need to be, old or young or tall or short if you can play play you know the only ones that's going to hurt you because be, these guys are so big if somebody's going to hurt them i said listen the only one that's going to hurt somebody on the playing uh, uh, when they're playing is the people who can't play those are the guys you know, everybody else who play football you play football man unless somebody has some bad mind or something they're going to hurt you because hey you, you make him look bad or something like that's all but we you play football like any sport if you know how to play no one gonna get hurt you know that yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So the guy, they don't know how to yeah. tackle. They don't know how to do. They, they, they're the ones that going to hurt you. So Jonathan mindset now. So Julian seemed to be set. He's passing on information. So Jonathan mm -hmm. must be a little eager. The scholarship thing, seeing that Julian Fogo, that is out of the question with Jonathan also. Oh, yeah. Did you stay around that type of environment long enough to have that type of experience to know what to pass on? Because you might be a commodity now. Uh, if you kind of live, you wouldn't live like, like the players, but were you around it long enough to, to have a little idea? Oh, I know the differences. <laughs> Definitely know the differences. I mean, in Europe, they know how to do things. I mean, you know, they take every kid from all forms of life, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whatever, whatever. You can play, hey, come and play. And it's free. You don't have to pay for anything because you know what? That's an investment in itself because that could be a gem, you know, that comes out next thing you know, he's a football player. That thing's going to make money for that club and it's going to big give, give them fame and all kind of you know glory and so forth as opposed to here in north america where people are finding it difficult it's, it's like a business here it's, it's like you have to pay to play and, and not everybody can afford okay. that especially so especially poor kids. Me, if i may know that you're on the system here is there any situation seeing that julian wanted to they all wanted to go Europe. Um, it seemed like you were boxed in a bit. Um, yeah. You know, was there a situation here where you wanted your children to just go for betterment and it didn't really matter or anything else? Yeah, my kids just love to fo the, the, love the football. And, and the thing is, I, I, I'm not sure whether Canada itself were, were, had hires people, you know, that, that, that's capable to bring up this thing. The mentality first, you know, the, the, these administrators in, in CSA, uh, that, that's, that's career. That's their career goal to be an administrator. And, and, and the money, whatever money should be channeled to the program itself, not these career people that's making. <laughs> Anyways, that's another story. Yeah. But, it, it, you know, like it, they want to be successful. They have to invest on the kids. And, 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 and I, I, again, the mentality is totally different from here to Europe because here you have to register, you have to pay, you have to do this, you have to do... Their clubs don't. They, they, they take any kids. And if you're good, you'll be, you'll, you stay. If you're not good, then you have to go to a lower league, lower club. Wow. You know? Yeah. So there's no payment, no, no payment, no affiliation, no parents paying? Not, not, no, no. They, 
uh, and you make the team, you're catered to. You get uniforms, you get all kinds of... But then again, it's apples and oranges because these are clubs who generate money and so forth because the fans of the whole city. Mm -hmm. As here, it's no. Like, you know, you have to channel in, in the grassroots money, unfortunately, just a lot of it goes to administrative as opposed to the football itself, you know? And then, and it's also unfortunate that a lot of kids, actually a lot of minority kids who can't afford these ridiculous registration are the ones that were missing these kids. Yeah. You know, they lose the talent that, look at the, look at these kids that are playing now, like the Davis and so forth. These are refugee kids that came to the system, you know? Yeah. Based on the accomplishment now, now they reach up to a certain level. I think is Julian the first um, Canadian to play in La Liga, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I um, understand that Jonathan has a lot of uh, accomplishment before he... Yeah, well, it. Julian, Julian started with... Okay, let me give you a history. Julian, I think, went to Marseille as a junior. Then he went to Saarbrücken in Germany, which is a second division. And he was noticed there because, to me, these are that these guys are not willing. They're not. They don't have egos. They 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 want to make the. They just want to play. And if they can't make the top team, it's okay. I'll play for the second team, Sarbrook, in a second division team. If somebody saw them, somebody saw him, picked him up to Hanover. He played four years in the Bundesliga top league, you know. Uh, and then from there he moved to Deportivo La Coruña. He played four years there, and he was uh, where was he there? Four years. The first Canadian to be in La Liga. And then after that, I think he went to, now this is, I think he went to TFC, he went to Greece, then he became a player in Ottawa, and then a coach in Ottawa, then a GM in Ottawa. You know, that was his whole career in the bottles. I may have missed a lot of stuff, Oh, the most cap Canadian on top of that. Yeah, um, I know when we and uh, you and I spoke a while back, you were proud of him as being mm -hmm. a, a GM. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, why, why are you so mm -hmm. proud of him being the GM of, of the other Because, one? because um, you see, he, this kid is so smart that uh, he knows that, um, you know, you got to do something, you know, like after soccer, so, so to speak, because, you know, he retired, he's retired now, but he's doing a lot, many things and, and, but he, he enjoyed um, general manager, you know, associating with other general managers and owners and so forth, so. And he had some success in that, and he and he enjoys that. As opposed to jo Jonathan, he loves to coach. He wants to coach, and he's got his license too. So you know, I think he's going to be coaching. So don't you may see the two brothers, one GM hopefully, and one coaching at the same club. That'd be nice to see. Well, I'm not writing you guys off after what you're accomplishing. Uh, <laughs> Anything's I'm, possible. Remember that. I'm keeping my money in my pocket. I'm, and you said also Jonathan had some accomplishment in terms of winning and yeah, well, different Jonathan, leagues. Came, came to to Holland uh, Rotterdam at twelve, and he played for Feyenoord Junior Academy until well he played on, and he he could have made it under sixteen. He, that's how well known he was there. But unfortunately, he was a foreigner, so he, and only if you're European that you could have started at sixteen. But he had to wait two more years, so he played on the A team until two years, and he made his debut, which was quite successful. And he did good in 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 in. Um, the Dutch league actually he won a cup there and then then he got picked up to go to uh, Mallorca I think that's where he went Mallorca and then that's when Lodrup was coaching and then he got picked up by Villarreal which um, which was a good team and that's when he started experiencing the the Champions League Cup because that's when Villarreal was always a top team there mm -hmm. uh, he did win a cup game in 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 Holland because he, he they beat uh, uh, final beat uh, PSV in, in the final in, in one of the cups. So, anyways, from there he went to England to Swansea, played for Swansea for a couple of years, and they also won a cup there in, in the English Cup. And they beat I don't even know which team. I know we went to Wembley. I was there at the game, but I can't remember. Then he went to 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 Italy with Napoli, and and he they won the Scudetto there. They beat Juventus. Then he was moved to Verona. Then he went to Verona, and after that. Where did he go? To Germany, to Frankfurt. And we won the cup there too against Bayern Munich in Berlin. So that was nice. That was the video I sent you. Yeah. And uh, so he, he, and then after that, he was in Brazil uh, and then won the bronze, uh, beating Brazil 3 0. So four different countries, four cups, and, and a bronze in the World Cup.
that's an accomplishment in itself, you know? Okay. So, well, I'm proud of yeah. them too, and I'm not the dad, so, you know. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think, I think they, they have a kind of blueprint that I want parents to know and players to yeah. follow because it's a kind of yeah. successful blueprint. Um, yeah. With um, Jonathan DeGuz one here. Um, Jonathan, we're here with the Souls Soccer Camp. How long have you been um, doing this camp? Now? Well, we've been doing this is the third year we've been doing it, third uh, annual camp, and um, it's been going uh, very well, growing each year. So uh, we will continue to do this, uh, give the kids more knowledge of football. And you know, I'm an active player playing in Europe, and I'm still learning. And uh, I want to bring the, the knowledge to the young kids here and um, give them a little opportunity uh, to learn more. And um, it's just a, I think it's a, a fresh a breath of fresh air for when if, uh, if uh, another style of play is being taught to the kids. I think now three days is still very short. Uh, hopefully we could do it a bit longer in the, in the future. So, um, you know, that's something we are working on and looking forward to. Whoa. What do you think now of the Canadian team, you know, in, in this country? I, I, they, they, they got some real good talent there. I mean, real good, good individual talent. But the thing is, I see where it, the football is a, it's a team sport, man. Uh, the coach has to get them together, working together, not just offensively, but defensively as a cohesion. And that's how you find strength. You know, with the team working together, not just one or two guys that's a, a star. I mean, no, we got to move together as a team. And that's how you're going to get success. So far, there's some individual talent there. Now we just need, and I'm going to afraid that we may get shocker once they start meeting the U.S. and the Costa Ricans and the Mexicans. Like, you know, you got to do a lot more. I mean, we did good, but we can do better, I think. Yeah. Well, I always know in the, in the CONCACAF here, yeah, style of play seemed to be the most prominent things when you look at the yeah. Central Americans and Mexico, mm -hmm. no matter how the others build up, that yes, style yes. of play always, because for the others, they need to exercise some patience. So yes, I yes, don't know yes. how, how you look at the, the situation in terms of style of play, because for you to go the Dutch system, when you mentioned before about the knocking it around and all that, mm -hmm. um, there's a distinct style of play difference in CONCACAF. Total football. Total football, that's why. A lot of Dutch went to, like, from Johan Cruyff went to Barcelona, I think. And they, they just revolutionized the, the game. And you can see how that's how the Spanish plays. And that's why you see years and years of Dutch coaches coming to Barcelona. Even now, they have a Dutch coach. <laughs> so, because that's just the, the Dutch influence. Because they played total football from way back then. But they're always attacking and they're always controlling the ball. And, and it's an amazing thing to watch. And I think... Uh, I mean, hindsight, we, we, we made the right decision going to Holland as opposed to going to big countries like Germany and England and, you know, they, they learn from the best. Yeah. So, Bobby, I want to, um, in wrapping up your whole, I have to put it as your career now because you're the one that people hear hearing from. Um, mm -hmm. Anything you would have done differently to even maximize the success of your kids or it was just right? I would say it's just right because a lot of stuff that I didn't know, I mean, never went to Europe. I don't know how, what, what it's going to be like. I mean, we didn't have maps. We didn't have GP, like all these phones, all these, you know, all these social media stuff. Everything was manual. So you went there, you booked your hotel, you did all this. There. Everything was on the phone, you know, and, and it, it had its moments. But you know what? As long as the end result was good. I would change the thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I find your end result was very, very, very good, man. Now. We had our trials and tribulations. We have had a lot of uphill battles. We made a lot of sacrifices, but you know what? Look at the bigger picture. Look at the bottom line. That's all you need to know. <laughs> so for parents now, you would tell them if the kid was interested in going the route of a Jonathan de Guzman or Julian de Guzman, um, well, you have to know, you have, like, well, I knew, I, I knew, and, 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 you know, you do not send a 12 year old somewhere unless you know, you know, you got to have some, you have to have some sort of, how you call this inner instinct. That's, I think he's going to make it, or he's got a potential as, as long as he's got that potential, you know what, you have to give him a chance. That way there's no regrets. That way, as you go through life, 
giving you a chance. I did. I honored what I promised you. I brought you there. And you know what? They did it themselves. I didn't do anything, but I gave them the opportunity. And then they showed it. So, hey, that's all that mattered. Yeah, but Bobby, when I listen to Julian and I see mm -hmm. what Julian did with a father mm -hmm. like you, mm -hmm. what Jonathan inherited in terms of Julian and you. Yes, uh, yes. That question I just asked there, it's still tough for those out there because you talk about adaptation to going yeah. to a place. Adaptation to culture. It, Plus, a lot of our kids get sheltered too. Like a lot of, you know, you know how... It is a kid, especially a young, a younger kid, go abroad. Don't forget, you're sending these kids abroad, a different, across Europe, different country. These kids don't know nothing. I mean, I don't think they probably traveled around Ontario or maybe even gone to the States, but going across there, going to a different culture, different, and they all look at you different, especially if you're a minority, they're going to look at you different. You know what I mean? Yes. And you don't speak the language. You don't speak this. It's a lot. It's a shell shock, especially with kids that are sheltered. Once they're sheltered, it's, it, it, it's, they, don't, they just want to come home. They miss home, you know? As opposed to these kids, man, this is where I wanted to be. And they, they said, this is where, I, that, that, that desire. You got to have that passion. If you don't have that passion and inner desire, or you know, then man, oh man, that, that's half the battle, man. So that shelter, that shelter thing now, um, if they're sheltered and they just show a little ability, more than likely they won't make it because it's a new environment. Listen, we, we are guilty of sheltering our kids because we protect them. We always have to protect them. So we shelter them. We shelter them. But you know what? You can't spoil them because you know what? They have to live. As when they grow up, they have to be independent. They have to survive out there. And you know what? To me, <laughs> push them out there and see. Fly if you can fly. Fly. Go. Yeah, at least you try. But you know, that's why I said get them out quick and they become more independent quick. You know, yeah. because you see the talent. Every every child has a talent, you know, and we just have to harness it. And once we harness it, I said, "This kid ready, man. We have to push them out a little bit." You know, we guide. We're we're the adults. We have to guide them. Yeah, so you kind of push them a little bit because but, some some kids they have the talent, but they don't want to be pushed. They just settle to where they are. I'm the pre Madonna. I said, "No, man. There's bigger fields out there. There's bigger audiences. You have to show yourself." You know, you, you have there. to prove and, yourself. And, and for the parent responsibility, you were there most of the time yes. in communication and everything. They didn't you didn't just throw them out there and not be no, 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 no. You 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 test the level. Look how I what I did with Jonathan. Test his level. Jonathan was eight years old playing against twelve. When he was ten, he was playing against fifteen years old. And when he when Julian was gone, he's twelve, he playing against Mr. with, with Mr. H's team. So uh, at seventeen against bigger teams i don't i'm not there to push these kids to uh develop a team where they they're the best team and 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 and, and they're beating team the best team in ontario or canada that that, that 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 doesn't matter i was more concerned about their 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 personal development and when you're personal to me my opinion is the personal development is you always have to challenge yourself you have to challenge against bigger older faster guys and more skillful guys and that's how you learn that, that, that how you can defend these guys and how you can beat these guys. Like, that's how you learn. And, and why I'm saying that is because when you go to Europe, they're not going to put you on your own age group. They're going to put you on, on an older age group, which was Jonathan already knew he can play against bigger, older, faster, stronger boys. So he was ready for it. Yeah. Because I, we trained him from back here in Canada, playing against three, four years older. Because when they go up there, they don't just want an above average player. You got to understand, you're taking a job away from a local kid. So you're a foreigner. So you got to be better, way better. Because an average or top a little bit over, that's not good enough. You're taking a job away. You got to keep on that mentality. It's a competition from that age. So you got to be better. And that advantage that Jonathan was, he was. He was playing against older and better, so he was used to this thing. So he was. It was nothing to him, for him. So he he, he 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 went in smoothly, you know. You just nailed it, Bobby. You just nailed yeah, it. You always have to. You're you're, you're, you're a football player. You, the only way you're gonna improve is you play against better competition. You can't just go in there and beat up some. I know some weak team. You're not gonna learn nothing from that. You just might as well just dribble a ball around the pylon, right? But if somebody's trying to get the ball off you, you have to defend it. You have to do things. So that's how you learn. You got to compete against the best person, and that's how you, you become better. All right. 
So, all right, Bobby, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to let the public oh, hear love it, this, love dad, it, love it. this dad who really persevere on his children who are determined and you can hear it in his voice he's uh he has a passion also too in terms of determination so mm -hmm. they, they were in good hands and i want to thank you for giving this information and you take care and stay safe thank you for the interview and thank you all all right mm -hmm.